CSI Celebrity Style Inspiration Magandang gabi Pilipinas at ganun din sa lahat ng nanonood sa buong mundo. Welcome to CSI, Celebrity Style Inspiration. This is the Manila Times Entertainment and Lifestyle Pages Come to Life on the Manila Times TV. This is now our third episode and thank you so much sa mga nanood at nag-express ng support sa last two episodes namin so far. You can still watch these on the Manila Times TV and CSI's Facebook pages and through www.manilatimestv.com. At dahil po mga jarista kami, mapapanood na rin po ang CSI sa www.manilatimes.net ang online edition ng oldest newspaper sa Pilipinas. So, para sa talakayan, huntahan, balitaan, katuwaan tungkol sa showbiz at iba pa, kasama ko pa rin dito sina reporter writers natin na sina Christina Alpad and Isa Iglesias and of course, our EP Arlo Custodio with Nika Roque assisting us. Simula na po natin ang balitaan. Nandito na naman tayo sa newsroom ng The Manila Times at this week, Dito naman ho ako nakikigulo sa aming business section headed by Mr. Alvin Dakanay, or acting editor. Sabi niya, acting para actor. And of course, his assistant, Toton Fitalino, and the ever-lovely proofreading head namin. And uh, lit, ano pa? Marami pang sections na ine-edit. Uh, a USG professor, ayaw lang niya magpakita sa camera, si Miss Ash Medina. So, pasensya na po kung madaldala ko sa tabi niyo, pero mag enjoy naman kayo sa mga balita namin today. We will start a segment called The Winners and Downers of the Week. Big winners, sina Ann Curtis at Marco Gumabaw sa pelikulang Just a Stranger na tumabo sa takilya ng 30 million for its first three days. Congratulations sa stars and of course sa Viva Films. Downer lang na may mga netizens na pinunan nila ang love scenes ni Ann at Marco at iniintriga ang asawa ni Anna si Erwin Husef. May social media followers mismo si Erwan na nagsasabi na disrespectful daw si Anne at awkward ang role dahil hindi na siya single. Sumagot naman si Erwan na hilarious ang comments at sabi pa niya, and I quote, I've known my wife as an actress since day one and I have the utmost admiration for what she does. End of story. I actually actively gave Anne inputs when I read the script on how I think the story could be developed or portrayed. Ikinasal si Anna at si Erwan sa New Zealand noong 2017 and they will mark their second anniversary in November. Downer naman ang pelikulang indak ni Nanadine Lustre at Sam Concepcion. Sa dami ng mga sinihan na pinagpalabasan na inag-struggle na umabot sa 10 million ang box office earnings nito. Pero okay lang yon, kasi winner na winner naman si Nadine sa bridal fair na Marry Me at Marriott. Kinover ito ng The Manila Times Lifestyle where Nadine was the showstopper of fashion designer Michael Leva. Pinag-usapan ang appearance ni Nadine pati sa social media dahil para naman talaga siyang josa. Fit na fit sa kanya ang title ng collection na Halo. Diyan lang po kayo at magbabalik po kami. Mga isyung pinag-uusapan, mga palitang laman ng pahayagan, impormasyong dapat niyong malaman, tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! CSI Celebrity Style Inspiration Welcome back. You're still watching CSI Celebrity Style and Inspiration on the Manila Times TV. So, simula na natin ang balitaan ngayon. Tina, last week medyo marami tayong naging comment sa report mo ha. But we will get back to that later on the show when we bring the entire team together para ma-discuss natin yung mga nangyari sa episode natin last week in terms of feedback naman ng ating mga 
viewers, ang ating mga CSIers. Anyway, Tina, what do you have for us this week? For this week, ang video naman sa aking report ay mga certified fit and healthy. Okay! You know, basketball, boxing, volleyball, and in recent years, football are the sports Filipino fans widely follow and take pride in. But over the years, rugby has slowly been creeping into Philippine consciousness. Matapos nga ang panalo sa international competitions, the Philippine Volcanoes, the name of our national rugby team, continues to bring pride to the country as it hit number 42, its highest finish to date in the world rugby rankings. Today, let's hear it for the Philippine men's rugby team and get to know how rigorous their training program is. Let's also find out the ultimate secret on how they recover from these rigorous trainings day in and day out. Narito ang certified CSI report ni Cristina Alpad. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously for us uh, at the moment we're training uh, mostly every day, about two to four hours each day, um, depending on whereabouts it is during the week. Uh, from there, you know, it's usually the boys have quite a bit of downtime, so we sort of relax by, you know, reading books, playing cards, watching movies, or even sort of having a nap during the day as well. And from there, it's it's just good to that we got on board with Tempest, so it really just helps us a lot with our with our recovery, but also just little things like just napping during the day, so we have the eye masks now as well which help a lot um, and just yeah the overall mood is, is, is lifted as well so as a result of that so yeah just what well, just to, like add on to what Tommy was saying it's just it's really good a lot of the boys have like uh, other things on their mind from like when they have to go back to work and if they're gonna get injured playing and doing the intense training we do and it's it's just a relief that we do have like temper as a as a, a thing to relieve that stress mentally as well and knowing that we're gonna get a good night's sleep so we can recover and be at our best performance. So for myself I'm a father of three so like I always think to myself I I can't get injured in that and like the sleep pattern for me is it needs to be vital so that I know I can you know be aware and stay mentally and physically ready for the, the next day because we're at a high level of rugby here in the Philippines which is really cool to see because in Australia rugby is quite high and now we're up that level here in, in the home in my hometown so it's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll just talk about lifestyle in terms of in terms of lifestyle a lot of the guys come from different backgrounds we have different work commitments some are students so there's all different demands on us uh, physically and mentally and I think that living this type of lifestyle where it's active but also we have responsibilities just as like uh, Emmanuel said about some have kids some have families some are in students such as Tommy um, some have full-time jobs personally I work for myself and there is different demands you've we've got we're constantly thinking we're suddenly stressed we're worrying and having this place of solitude and rest and relaxation really makes a difference in allowing us to really maximize on our responsibilities but also our responsibilities as a high performance athlete and I think that rest is paramount to us and it's really helped us uh, create clarity in our lives and also as an athlete which enhances our performance. Okay, Tina Pai, thank you for that report. Sa mga machong machong Philippine volcanoes, no? Pero, Tina, sabi mo nga, recently pa lang nagiging popular ang rugby sa Pilipinas. Pero I think uh, there was one incident na maaalala siguro ng mga CSIers natin kung kailan natin unang narinig talaga at tumatak sa atin ang rugby team natin na Philippine Volcanoes. Ano nga ba yun, Tina? Noong 2011, bumungad sa mga uh, nagdadaan sa EDSA yung billboard nung ilan sa mga Philippine Volcano rugby players Ay, natin. Ay, nila. Na naka-brief lang sila. Ba't naman nagbablush ka? <laughs> Ilang beses ka dumaan sa billboard na yon? Too many to count. Po. Too many times! <laughs> Pero sino sa kanilang pinakasikat sa tingin mo? Siguro po, kasi din hanggang ngayon active pa siya sa, um, sa team, mm -mm. si Jay Kletz po. Nag-act na po siya ngayon as their manager. Okay. But before, isa po siya sa masasabi natin, faces sa Philippine Group team. So lahat sila halos mga half Filipino, yes, uh, half, half Australian, Australian New Zealand, half British, ganyan. British oh, Pero oh. mostly po Australia and New Zealand. Oh, ang rugby, yung parang... Ganon siya eh, di ba? Tapos <laughs> yung ball niya, different. Oo, oh, oh. iba yung, oo, oh, oh. kasi syempre tayo ang alam nating rugby, oh. pang dikit. Actually, Misty, 
Um, <laughs> honestly, sabi din nila sa mga former interviews, isa sa challenges nila yon yung rugby, kasi na-associate siya dun sa solvent na ginagamit. Yes, space. yes. So, isa sa challenges nila na para ma-accept din sila ng um, Filipino sports. Oo, oo, para din naman, iba na yung dating oo. ng pag sinasabi sa atin rugby, rugby. ba We mm-hmm. often think of yun na nga, how sad, mm-hmm. di ba? Yung mga yes, street po. children. Pero, um, ito is a sport that um, Filipinos are starting to learn yes. and hopefully, uh, with exposure of the Philippine volcanoes in endorsements like the one you went to, yes. um, magkaroon na rin siya ng following. Yes. Okay. Ano bang typical look ng mga rugby players? Well, kasi po super rough nung, um, nung sport. So, karamihan po talaga sa kanila. Big build. Um, very muscular kasi yung pagtatakel tapos sa field talagang laban kumbaga kaya okay. very, so uh, nung kaharap mo sila sinabi mo ba pa feel <laughs> hindi hindi ko baka ma-shock sila <laughs> ah, baka ma-shock sila pero gusto mo sana pa feel <laughs> baka itakel ko nila ako oh. dun sa mga bed oo nga ayaw <laughs> naman natin na nasaktan kaya hindi ka makakapag taping today pero talaga naman siguro pag nakita mo sila lahat ba halos <laughs> guwapo oh. syempre kung inahanap ko hindi lang macho dapat guwapo rin guwapo ah, ba pwede pwede po sa poster boy pwede okay yes, so sa tingin mo ba magmi-meet ulit kayo ng Philippine Volcano <laughs> Dahil hot sila mm-hmm. at sila ay mga volcanoes. Okay, Tina Pai, hanapan mo pa ako ng hot na hot na balita mm-hmm. for next week. Yes, uh, in the meantime, tayo po ay magbe-break. CSI will be right back. CSI, Celebrity Style Inspiration. Okay, now we're back with Isa Iglesias for her certified CSI report. What do you have for us this week, Isa? This team report for today is merong certified girl power. Girl na girl ha, a new generation of divas has arrived. Na introduce na nga ng GMA Network ang kanilang newest all-female quartet na kinabibilangan ni Nariel, Dani, Lyra at Mel, collectively known as XOXO. Galing sa original singing competition na The Clash ang mga promising artists na ito. This group can take you way up high with their breaking vocals but can get you down dancing as well with the latest R&B hits. Get ready for loads of talent coming from XOXO in this certified CSI report from Isa Iglesias. artist na workshop. Siyempre po, after ng The Clash, hindi naman po kami like perfect na singer. Kailangan din po namin ng improvement or develop po yung talent namin. So, yung binigay na singing workshop po ng GMA, parang nagka, uh, nagka-idea po sila ng bukuo ng girl group. So, based on that po, vocally, parang chosen po kami na maging, na, na chosen kami na makasama dun sa planning na naman buo ng girl group. So, ayan po. And the decision <laughs> din po kami. Ano, beses pa na. Bakit po XOXO yung pangalan ng group? Yun. XOXO po. Kasi ang pili ko ng XOXO is hugs and kisses. Tapos, ang na, ang naisip po ng mga taga GMA Artist Center, since friends po kami, uh, naisip nila na gumawa ng grupo na mag evoke ng friendship, ng serenity, ay sincerity, ng faith, at love. <laughs> so, women empowerment po. So, uh, naghanap po sila ng name na would best describe or best fit yung parang yung friendship. Yung, uh, yung friendship, yung sincerity. <laughs> yun, tsaka yung I aming mean, power, yung women empowerment. Siyempre po, um, malaki po yung opportunity. As in, maraming doors na nag-open na sa amin pagkatapos po ng The Clash. Nagkaroon po kami ng mga guesting sa GMA, mga mall shows, and nagkaroon din po kami ng chance na makapag-act sa mga teleseries. And 
Sobrang nagpapasalamat po kami sa mga workshops na binibigay ng GMA RT Center. Dahil, dahil sa mga workshops na yun, doon po nabuo ang XOX. So, siguro po yung naging different po ngayon kasi yung iba-iba po yung genre po na nakasanayin po namin. At yung ngayon po, kailangan po namin maging isa na po ngayon. Kaya yun po siguro yung ano. At saka over the course of the training po kasi, we've learned how to be different in a way, but still be united. Alam niyo po yun, parang we bring something different to the table, but once we are united together, parang may harmony. So, is a pie. Yes, ma'am. So, girl na girl ang report mo this oh. week, ha? Nakidance-dance ka ba sa mga XOXO? Yes, ma'am. Nag-launch sila. Diba? Ang daming girl groups na, I think, no? Siyempre, very tita of Manila na ako. So, I cannot follow anymore kung ano mga top girl groups ngayon. Pero, give us, give our CSIers an idea. Ilan na ba yung mga girl groups ngayon na sinusubaybayan ng ating mga uh, kasama? Uh, meron sa local, ma'am. Oo, sa local, sa yes. Local. Um, mga sikat na girl group ngayon is yung girlfriends mm -hmm. sa showtime po. And then, we have mocha girls. Yung so, mocha girls sexy, dati pa yun, eh, diba? Pa. Pero oh, ngayon, oh. nagpa-perform pa rin sila. And then, yung um, MNL48. Yung Ay, favorite yung favorite ni Reggie. Yun. Yung na-meet niyo ho siya sa Playtimes last week. Yung playtimes, gagawin din namin yan ulit in our next episode. So, humandaan mga tao sa editorial. <laughs> Pero I'm just wondering, no, um, how are people accepting mm -hmm. uh, the girl groups that we have today? Yung mga local girl groups natin. These days po kasi medyo nauuso eh. Madami na kasi from outside the country. We have K-pop. Madami oh, pong girl group doon. May mga boy group din. So, ngayon, yung mga millennials talaga, sobrang, sobrang nauhook sila sa mga girl group na katulad nitong report ko. Pero yung kanila bang style of singing, do they necessarily have to, well, ito lang word na magamit ko siguro, imitate yung mga K-pop? Kasi dyan nagsimula yan eh. Kailangan ba medyo ganun ang style nila? Or as Filipinos naman, nagbibigay ba sila ng sariling flavor natin? Not necessarily kailangan gayahin, ma'am. Kasi sobrang dami ng talents ang meron tayo dito sa Philippines, ma'am. Katulad nitong XOXO, iba-iba yung genre na um, kinakanta nila. So, pag pinagsama-sama sila, sobrang ganda ng blending ng voices nila. And ang gaganda rin nung katulad nung nag-launch, yung mga may mga kinukover sila na kanta na na parang different siya sa mga nakasanayan natin. Talagang they bring something new mm -hmm. to songs, kahit Correct. na cover songs mm -hmm. to. Anyway, um, let's just go through the members mm -hmm. of XOXO. Uh, first of the first is Riel, tama Riel, ba? Yeah. Si Riel ay tiga. Taga Cagayan de Oro siya. Okay. Sa group siya yung parang the diva. Mm -hmm. Ang kanyang voice parang mala, Mariah Carey. Okay, at ang description mo sa kanya dito ay fierce and yes. sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, si Lyra, what can you tell us about her naman? Medyo tough girl siya dito sa group nila. So, yung voice niya, I think parang medyo husky. husky. Okay. Pero maganda, maganda yung voice. Okay, and lastly, si Mel naman. Mm -hmm. Ano naman ang kanyang forte o expertise? Uh, sweet, sweet girl daw siya. She's from, ano eh, from... Uh, Bulacan. Ay, parang mm -hmm. ako lang. <laughs> I think siya yung siya yung ako lang. Siya yung Natata. nagkukundi man eh. Akundi uh, man. Nagkukundi man siya before I oh. think siya yun. Tapos, so, yung nadala niya yung uh, pagkasweet mm -hmm. ng voice niya sa The Clash. Yun po. Pero since the launch, um, Isa, how is how are netizens accepting that group? Kasi, as you have said, no, sila yung mga hindi masyadong pinala sa The Clash, no? So, um, hindi sila yung mga nanalo. But, you know, ako, I take my hats off to them that they're confident enough yeah. to come up with a group and, and you know, start a career. Anong reaction ng public? Meron na bang hindi masyadong maganda? Alam mo naman ang bashing, usong-uso. Actually, ma'am, well accepted sila. Okay. Nakapag-perform na sila sa Studio 7 last uh, showing nila nung Saturday. Mm -hmm. And very... Um, maganda yung pag-welcome sa kanila ng mga tao. Walang walang bashing, walang bashing. Kasi uh, pure talent naman yung pinakita nila eh. Kasi kitang-kita naman sa mga voices nila, iba-ibang genre. Mm -hmm. Tapos, 
na pagsama-sama sila. Ang kwento nila, nag-audition pa nga sila eh. Uh, bago sila mabuo, hindi sila handpick na kapag ano pa sila, na kapag audition pa. And, and nung, nung April, sila nagsimula mag-training with Vince De Jesus. Ah, okay. Oo oh, oh, naman. Oh, oh. And si, oh, oh. I think si uh, Miss Jo Abunda. Okay. Abunda. Siya yung ano, choreographer naman pagdating sa mga dance. So, sabi nga nila, I don't know kung hindi na itong ginagamit na term ng millennials. May K naman itong mga XOXO girls. May, talaga sila May karapatan. May karapatan. Well, we'd love to see more of them and we wish them Good luck! Ang pinakabagong girl group natin dito sa Pilipinas, ang XOXO. Watch out for them. Thank you, Isa, for your report. And I'll see you next week. Mga isyong pinag-uusapan. Mga palitang laman ng pahayagan. Impormasyong dapat niyong malaman. Tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia. Kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Off. Welcome back to the show. Because I always say that CSI is the Manila Times pages come to life. We bring to you today one of our top columnists in our entertainment section. She is a poet, writer, pop culture journalist, comic book editor, producer, and former television host who is also often nicknamed the country's queen of goths. But to us, she is our one and only fangirl, and she has been with the Manila Times Entertainment section for many years, bringing to us every week her very honest, very well-written, and very entertaining reviews for the movies that come out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Karen Kunawix. Yay! I think it should be fan tita already. Because <laughs> of how, I mean, I started as a girl. Yes. But because but of how long I've Don't been worry, it, it doesn't show. Yeah, but fan... And is if, the world ready for fan yeah, tita? If you're fan tita, then I'm <laughs> probably there as well. But you know what also makes us proud every year? Um, you know, I was saying that uh, what I love about being in the Times, the people that we gather and even, even our columnists, they really are so passionate about what they do. And, and Karen is so passionate Very. that every year she has m vowed to attend the San Diego Comic Con. Very yes. exciting. Yes. This is where you see all these Hollywood stars just gathering and then it means yes. lining, I mean, right. staying the overnight. Stars, you have the creators and it's not just the big names. Yes. Um, you also get to meet comic book creators on mm -hmm. the ground and it's these creators and writers that provide the material mm -hmm. and the stories mm -hmm. that eventually become the big properties. So yes. it's nice to support the big names and the up-and-coming. And to see them from when they started. Yes. And suddenly there are these Marvel movies oh, and these right. um, DC big blockbusters. Right. But, you know, it sounds so glamorous, but I know, Karen, it's not that glamorous having to line up for this. No, uh, for other people, but I mean, over the years right. you've made friends. But tell us lang a little bit about experiencing the San Diego Comic Con. I mean, the glamorous part is coming up with a photo, but that is usually um, given by the studio mm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, because the photos aren't very good quality and really you're very tired. You start, like let's say you'd want to see a Marvel or a DC panel, people will line up for these uh, 24 hours to even 48 hours in advance. Oh my goodness. Camping so, out talaga. Yeah, so um, uh, you usually prepare yourself with a hoodie, with uh, water and food, and you need friends, you need a team, and everybody supports each other like they do um, tag team, like they take shifts. And they're just very rewarded mm -hmm. to enter the room. Mm -hmm. Like you've entered the room, but there's so much cheering because it's it's hard to do it. But it's a test of fandom, meaning how much of a fan are, are you? you? Yes. Will you sleep? You know, you have a bed. People have they get an Airbnb or they have a hotel room, and you can sleep in a nice bed. But you're out there. Yeah, on the pavement, no? On the pavement, and yes. uh, and some are you know they're there. They bring um. Uh, sleeping bag. They're very dedicated. You know, Karen has 
a following herself. No, I mean even my my brother says, "Oh my God, you know, Thank she's you. she's a comic queen." But just for the other, you know, other um, viewers now of the program to get to know you, at least yung mga mahilig din sa mga superheroes. Who's your favorite? Rocket Raccoon from um, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, cool, cool guy. Um, he, cool he's furry always, guy. <laughs> yes, um, he's always underestimated mm -hmm. because he, to them, it's like a raccoon, he gets called a rabbit, a dog, a fox, mm -hmm. vermin. Um, but he's a very excellent tactician mm -hmm. and he has gotten the gang um, out of very rough spots. and. I think when Thor was having a meltdown, who, it was yeah. Who, who woke him up out yeah. of his stupor? Yeah, it like, was him. You know, shape up. Yeah. You are the god of thunder, and True. you have a huge responsibility yeah. to Asgard and to Earth. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's that, and then Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. Also, and then favorite. I know in past columns you can Google, of course, the Manila Times uh, past issues. Karen would talk about whether she's Marvel or DC. She yeah. says that. But then, just to ask, para wala rin taking sides. Favorite Marvel movie of all time? Oh, um, Winter Soldier, Captain America. Even if I love Rocket, it has to be edges that one out. Favorite quality. DC movie. Um, DC movie would probably be um, the Christian Bale and Chris Nolan Batman. Batman. Yes, yeah. Batman Begins. Eh, pag comics naman with a K. Sa comics Pilipino. With, I definitely, definitely, and maybe I'm a little biased, but it would be Trece. Mm -hmm. And then um, when uh, when I was younger and in the 90s, I really loved Wasted mm -hmm. by Jerry Alamilan. Um, but there's so many good creators. If you go to Comicet, um, like I picked up uh, something called D13 or Agent 13 and... Uh, this was before Trece came out, and it is uh, like a Filipino James Bond. Cool. Um, there's a guy who made Adventure Finders. His name is Rod Espinos. I have um, I have stacks of these. I feel so bad. I haven't read them all. But she has stacks of them. I have stacks, and I will get around to it. I, I'm a fan, so I'm just one of these people that I go to the comic convention and I read more than yes. than I can. I know uh, Jay Ignacio. Yeah. We need more women out there. <laughs> One of the reasons why I am trying to get Karen to tell me all about her favorites and all the things that excite her is that I'm hoping that uh, one day soon she can actually start something regular with CSI. So um, we will cross our fingers. So damihan niyo po ang views para mapilit na namin si, Ka si right. Karen, our fangirl, yes. to also and come up in CSI. And they can share their discussion about yes. these films because uh -oh. we also have very passionate fans yeah. and I want to know what they think. And yes. it, helps me, it helps me talk to you, the audience, mm -hmm. more. Like, are you young? Are you old? Yes, yes true. I mean, am I missing out on like, not talking about certain artists mm -hmm. that are important yeah. to so they can, generation. Yeah, they can tell us about it, diba? So, ngayon naman po, I will actually give the camera to Karen because uh, she will talk about one of the big moments, her big moments right. when she attended the San Diego Comic Con this year. So, uh, Karen, take it away. Karen Kunowich, The Manila Times. Jessica, what does Beverly Marsh <clears throat> bring to the table being the only girl in the gang hmm what does she bring to the table being the only girl I don't know that Beverly Marsh would know that I think maybe in some sense she forces well as adults I don't know I, I can answer that as a kid being on the outside like she forces the the boy losers to be aware of their actions <laughs> because there's someone of another gender there um, but also maybe there's a sense, you know, she was really, uh, her, Beverly's biggest monster w was waiting for her at home every day. And uh, so there's something about that that makes her fearless. Pennywise isn't as scary to her as uh, what her father or her husband are. So maybe she brings that quality, the sense that she, has a, she is a little bit fearless. You were saying um, that you know, 
the best horror movies, some of the best ones really honor women. Um, how do you feel this story and maybe the first one does that? Well, I, th I think also knowing Andy and Barbara and uh, when I saw the first one, saw Beverly running and jumping off the cliff, you know, the first one to do it and to how they treated her and that she wasn't like this porcelain doll. Sometimes when you think back on, in coming of age movies, like the love interest of the girl is like this perfect little child and Beverly is like scrappy and cool and, and I love that. Um, and I think in our film, um, what makes her so interesting is she really has this incredible arc about discovering love and what love is supposed to be and that um, she's in charge of it. And I think that's empowering. <clears throat> Jay, what is your um, thank God or what, what is something new you've learned from working with Jessica and working on this film? Wow, a lot. Um, I mean, Jessica has been very <laughs> inclusive and, and very great and um, I think just the tenacity to keep going, get through the scene, and um, and give it your all on every take. This film was really challenging physically for us, um, and Jess was a complete trooper in that sense. Uh, we were working long days, and you know, seeing the relationship that she had built with Andy and Barbara, the uh, director and producer, was um, really lovely to see. You know, so she. She almost has built this family relationship mm -hmm. with these guys, um, and it was something to look up to. You know, it, it, film making films it doesn't just have to be a job; it can be uh, a beautiful way of life. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really lovely to see that, and I'm just completely humbled to be oh, working honey. with Miss Chastain and Mr. McAvoy. Do you think the horror genre is, in a way, getting sort of mainstream credibility and respect that it wasn't, let's say, 10 years ago, and, you know, maybe 10 years ago, you wouldn't have seen a movie like this helmed by Jessica Chastain and, you know, Absolutely. yourself. Well, I don't know. I mean, let's look, let's think. Naomi Watts, Nicole Kidman, Mia Farrow, Sigourney Weaver. There's so many incredible performances by wonderful actresses in the horror genre. Um, so... I, I think the horror genre is split in two. There's like the psychological horror films, which to me those are the mo those for me are the most interesting, like and the it, yeah, yeah, or Us, you know, the Jordan Peele film or Get Out, those films. And also there's another horror film genre that's like the torture uh, genre. And for me, I much prefer the psychological horror because I think that's scariest that the monster's actually one of us. You know, it's not a um, it's in our heads. It's what we're capable, of, what we're capable of, what we're denying, um, what we're repressing. Um, so that, the, I, I don't know. I don't see that it's changed that much. But maybe I'm wrong. What do you feel? I mean, I feel like the studios are backing it more, and so they're giving, you know, more opportunity to the directors and the storytellers to actually make what they. Mm. They're, what they have in their heads or in their minds um, as opposed to what they think is going to sell or visually be pleasing. Uh, yeah, and I think Andy's sort of done an incredible job at taking that helm, you know. The success of the first movie um, has given him the reins to really be free in his vision of, of the chapter two that you're about to see. Uh, and I think he'd be very pleased. So Jeremy and the other kids left such big shoes to fill. Were Absolutely. you feeling pressured every day knowing these kids hit the bar and you are... <laughs> Not really, because, I mean, Andy was such a great leader. He, he always was bang on with what he wanted. Um, and he would always give us many takes to get it right. Uh, you know, and I think having the first film to watch these kids... Um, really helped you know just kind of you breathe in what they what they did in the first film um, and there was a real sweetness to Jeremy's performance that I could tap into and I could relate to and I you know the the entity of Ben as a young child was kind of similar to how I was as a kid so uh, I kind of felt ready to to play him 27 years later thank you thank you so much how does it feel to be uh, popular people, Hollywood people, and um, connect, trying to reconnect with being uh, 
a loser oh. when you're in a world where everybody wants to be with you. That's not, you that all, it's not that great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the truth. It's not that great. I think like a lot of us actually were like probably rather. ended up like this because we were like I don't know. I don't like. <laughs> I think you end up like uh, doing this as like a vocation. I think his childhood was hard sometimes, and then. The weird thing is, is that I don't know if you ever really shake all that insecurity and stuff. So it's just a balance. I think it's just trying to balance. You never feel like you never feel like, oh, now I'm cool. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we might look cool, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. Well, yeah. In Split, you were the monster, mm -hmm. and here the monster is running after you. And how how is that? Um, it's, uh, Fun or different? Well, every now and again, in the middle of a scene where I'm running away from Pennywise, I'm like, yo, 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 you, didn't you see Split? <laughs> <laughs> see Glass? <laughs> you know who I think I am? <laughs> you want to watch that, pal? <laughs> I was jacked, like, a while ago. <laughs> Not anymore, but it was a while ago. And I can get there again quickly, I've been told. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Were you satisfied? Of course I am! <laughs> Very, very. On a scale of one to ten, how satisfied are you with oh, chapter? Nine. Nine. Mainly because I still want more. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a prequel or a sequel, but let's be honest, it it concluded so well. I really love it. And how did you feel, uh, Bill Skarsgård performed? He doesn't have that many scenes as himself mm -hmm. barely see but, him but you know his performance were quite very unique and uh how should i describe this not so human i've been portraying pennywise for like two years already yes, and that's I, your still, breakout cosplay. I still can't get it <laughs> there's something in him there's something in his performance that's so unique it's not so human i don't think any anyone could do it <laughs> CSI Celebrity Style Inspiration Yeah, so I'm a little bit starstruck. I have the one and only Jean Garcia across me. Uh, but as I can interview today for uh, CSI, I'm part of the show I'm in Celebrity Style and Inspiration. Okay. And uh, we're very, very happy to be one of our first one on ones. Really? And it is such an honor for us. And it also is such an honor for me to be able to greet you a belated happy birthday. Yes, yes. Apparently, although you look so young and youthful. Um, Miss Jean Garcia turned her golden years yes, yes, on this August year. 22. If yes. you don't mind, we'll talk about watching me feel a little later, but just for, for your fans out there. Um, how does it feel to be a, a golden girl? And how did you celebrate her big day? Sabi nga nila, matang tumatanda ako, pero marami rin sabi, bumabata. Sabi ko, hindi kaya bumabata kasi tumatanda ka. So ang text na dapat siya matata ng bumabata, diba? Oh, I feel good. Um, Ano, uh, para naman sa akin kasi yeah, no, pagka tumatanda ka at nadadagdaga ng iyong edad, it means lang na ang ibig sabihin lang nun ay kumbaga, uh, nagkakaroon ka ng mga mas maraming experiences, mas maraming, mas maraming kang natutunan, yung wisdom mo ngayon mas iba na, diba? iba na ang pag-iisip, nagmamature ka. So, ako, I'm just enjoying my life and I nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon dahil pinaabot niya ako sa ganitong edad, diba? na kumbaga, may trabaho, uh, healthy, and marami pang trabaho, mga mga, ano, uh, mga, mga trabaho na pinu-offer sa akin. So, I'm really very, very grateful to the Lord na eto, nandito ako ngayon sa posisyon ko ngayon. And, ano, I'm happy that I'm 50. I'm proud, actually. Hindi ko siya, kasi paganda ka ng paganda. Oh, wow. <laughs> diba? Thank Sabi you. Sabi Pilar. Sa... <laughs> Yan, parang si Ate Pilar lang. Paganda ng paganda. Diba? diba? Totoo yeah, naman ay, eh. Pero from the looks of me, still, and there's a lot to be excited about as you turn your golden year. And yes. one of them, of course, is this Pista ng Pilipinang Pilipino na entry. Na usually, we see you so glamorous, Madam Claudia, and you are a noted dramatic actress. And all of a sudden, nakakagulat, we see you carrying a, a, quite a long gun in this movie. 
di ba? Sa medyo di glamorous. So, paano napunta sa iyo yung proyekto nito, Jean? Um, actually, in email sa amin direct tayo. Namili naman siya. Honestly, I'll be very, very honest. Hindi lang naman ako yung kinonsider nila. Meron ding mga ibang artist ang kinonsider. Pero, ang ending nga is, nung nag-usap din kami ni direct tayo, uh, nung pinadala niya sa akin, through, of course, my manager, Manny Valera, and my handler, Beth Illustrious, Rivera, yung script, nagustuhan ko kaagad. Actually, na-in love kaagad ako. One, because hindi pa ako nakagawa ng ganitong klaseng pelikula. First time. Eh, tatlong dekada na akong nagtatrabaho na nandito sa show business, sa industriya nito, no? So, first time may offer na ganitong klaseng pelikula sa akin. So, it's really excited. Ang ano ko lang is, ang hinihingi ko lang sa kanya. Sabi ko, kung talaga direct na ako gusto mo dyan, tatanggapin ko, pero bigyan mo ako ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng training pagdating sa paghandle ng weapons, uh, yung fight, fight, yung fight scenes namin and all. So, sabi ko, kailangan ko para at least pagdating sa shooting, confident na ako na humawak ng baril. So, magkukontensate na lang ako at magkukukus na lang ako dun sa acting na lang and the character na gusto niya ipaportray sa akin. So, nag-work naman. So, how did it go? How was the training? I mean, um, uh, was I had an intensive training with, ano, with International Prat Maga Federation wow. here in the Philippines na headed by, actually, ang trainer ko ang nagtutuwi sa akin is the director himself, si Dindo De Jesus. So, nagkaroon kami ng ila, tatlong weapons yung ginamit namin eh, parang 9mm, Glock, 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 Glock. Sabihin ko, sabi ang Glock 9. Glock 9, may pointing rap. Glock 9. Favorite na nga na kaya si Jenica. Ano kami, tas meron ding machine gun, MC something, tapos shotgun also. So, yung mga weapons na gagamitin namin dun sa pinikula. Empowering ba? Of course. At saka, kasi takot talaga ako sa mga ganyan. Pero dahil nag-train nga ako under crab mag-a-kating ko, dahil magaling siya, at alam kong safe ako. Um, very confident ako. Nag-train ako. Nag-nagdagan ang confidence ko na wala yung takot ko. Tapos, um, nung nag-shoot kami, yung pagbinigay sa akin yung barel, automatic, alam ko kung paano siya hawakan. Hindi na yung ano ba to? Oo, ano ba to? And ano, hindi ganun. Tapos, eto pa, kaya pa ako lalo na excited kasi yung crab maga dito sa Philippines. Si John Wick, si Keanu Reeves. Under, at rinin din siya, under Krav Maga, US. Oo oh, nga, kasi kanina, wow. taray na ba? Kaya ba si director Tyro, no? Tapos parang, he was saying, um, he was talking about John Wick. Tapos mamaya, na, na, medyo na-pronounce namin siya na Jean Wick. So, uh -huh. why not? Because, actually, yun ang, actually, yun ang tawag sa akin ng Krav Maga ngayon dito sa Philippines. Jean Wick. So, there sa. really is something talagang bagong-bago na makikita namin mm -hmm. from Ginger. At saka, hindi ko in-expect na magagawa ko. Lalo na at my age. We did this last year, so I was 49 already, di ba? So parang nabigyan ako ng opportunity. That's why I'm very, very thankful to the direct fight on Okay. Um, pero how would you describe your character here? I know that sabi nga ni direct tayo, it's a psycholog psychological thriller as well. There is action, but yung drama hihingin pa rin sa'yo. Oo, uh, 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 uh. Actually, there's li very little, very minimal naman yung action eh. Uh, it's more on the story of this hired killer, uh, Luciana. Kung ano yung, ano yung, yung past, yung, yung, yung backstory niya. Bakit, bakit siya naging hired killer. Bakit doon napunta ang buhay niya? Ano ba yung story niya nung maliit siya? At habang lumalaki siya, tapos ngayong hired killer na siya, paano siya nabubuhay? Every day. Ano ang buhay ng isang hired killer na babae pa? Ha? Ano yung everyday life niya? At ano pa yung life na pupunta niya after na kung meron man siya makakasalan mo ha pag ibang mga tao? Exciting yung, well actually gripping. Sabi niya yung conflict uh, na darating. But of course, we both don't want to give any spoilers. Uh, pero hindi pa rin nila mamimiss yung drama oh, na yeah. mamibigay ni Definitely. Shooters. At saka medyo kakaiba. Kakaiba ito. Kasi well, mapapanood nyo naman sa pelikula. Hindi ito yung the usual na Jean Garcia na lumalabas sa pelikula or sa TV. Iba. Iniba namin yung atake ni Direk. Tapos, no makeup. Alam mo yun? Yung, oh, 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 yung ganoon. Yung glamorized. Walang, oh, uh, glamorized talaga. Tapos, talaga naman din talagang talagang mahuhulas ma ma ka rin naman talaga because 
yung location namin, usually exterior kami. Kung may interior man kami, bahay lang, or yung club, yung pub. Parang pub house ni Jay Manalo na kasama rin namin sa pelikula. Pero usually exterior kami, day and night. Tapos mataas ang araw. May send the whole day. Talaga manginitim ka talaga. Tapos lahar, maalit ako. May mga dumadaan na ng mga truck. Kasi lahar yun. So pick up nyo ng mga sand and all. Ganyan ang mga, mga rocks and ano. Dumadaan yun. Nagkakat kami, pagdadaan sila. So lahat talaga ng hirap. Sweat, heat. Tapos meron kami mga rain effects sa gabi, even sa madaling araw, may rain effects, so malamig, tutuyot at ganarin and all. Pero napaka-peaceful at napaka-papayapan ang aming shoot. Kaya very proud din ako sa grupo na to. And well, first and foremost, si Direct Tai kasi is a cool director. Sobra. It's, alam mo, pag napanood mo yung pelikula, napakagaling na director talaga. At ang wish ko talaga sa kanya, makagawa pa siya ng more films dito sa Pilipinas. At makikita mo ang ganda ng Pampanga at ng Sampanyas. Ipapakita yung direkta yan dito sa pelikula. That's why I'm very proud of it. From the traders now, we've heard some people are saying that this is actually the one to beat. Of course, PPP is also a competition. Ikaw naman ang expectations mo for the awards night? Is it at all in your mind? Or no, not at all. all. Not at all. Kasi uh, ako naman, uh, unang-una, masaya lang ako na nakasama kami sa, sa pitong pelikula dito sa pista ng pelikulang Pilipino. Kasi maraming pumasok, pumili lang ng pito, may top 7 lang. So kasama kami doon, doon pa lang happy na ako. So ayoko nang isipin yung nomination, ayoko nang isipin yung kung mananalo ba kami o ano. Ang gusto ko lang, sana ma-share namin yung hard work na ginawa namin sa pelikulang to everyone. Especially direct tie. Uh, Tyrone and the, all the actors, the production staff, the crew, lahat, even yung utility namin, yung hard work namin dito sa pelikula ito. Gusto ko lang sana mapanood ng mga tao. So ang gusto ko lang talaga maging successful yung aming pelikula. Na sana pasukin at maging box office hit. Bakit hindi, di ba? Kung magdi-dream ka naman, man, di ba kung mangarap ka, dream big. So, yung po talaga ang dream ko, hindi na yung, hindi na yung manalo ng award o ano. Ang gusto ko nalang maging successful siya sa tako. So, please invite our online viewers to uh, support the movie. Yes, yeah, sa lahat po ng mga viewers ngayong uh, to, uh, oras na ito. Hello po, ako po si Jean Garcia. Kasama po ako sa pelikulang Watch Me Kill, directed by Tyrone Asierto. Uh, kakaibang pelikula po ito at talaga namang pinagpagulan po namin. At bihira po tayong gumawa ng ganitong klaseng pelikula na suspense thriller. So sana po inaanyayahan ko kayong lahat. September 13, umpisa po yan ang pista ng pelikula ng Pilipino. Watch me kill. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan. Panuuren at magkita-kita tayo sa mga sinehan. I'm really very, very excited at very proud po ako to be part of this project. So I hope na tangkilikin niyo po ang aming pelikula. Maraming maraming salamat po. Have a nice day and pala, sana po yung lahat ng pitong pelikula pa Panuuri niyo po lahat at suportahan po ninyo para magtuloy-tuloy po ang ating festival ng Pista ng Pelikulang Pilipino. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You so much Jean Garcia. Thank you. We look forward to watching the movie. And we feel the passion. Bring your family. Yes, we feel the passion, yes, and, feel the passion and excitement. And that thank really you. will make a difference, I know. Thank Maraming you. salamat. Salamat, Tessa. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. CFI Celebrity Style Inspiration Okay, now we've come to the end of our show. Ang bilis ng oras. Welcome back and welcome bangs. <laughs> Siya po si Mika. Ang sinabi namin na uh, pang lima naming si S.I.R. And sh without her, marami kaming hindi pwedeng gawin. At siya po ang nagre-research para sa amin. At, at alam nyo po, shy lang siya ngayon kasi hindi ho siya kumakain ng carbs <laughs> ng rice. So, pinapakain po namin siya ng rice para maging na siyang katulad ni Tina at oh ni Isi. Oh my God! <laughs> Wait lang ah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, enough about us. Kasi I'm sure, yung mga bumabalik manood ng CSI for the third episode, yeah. Arlo, they will want us to talk about yung mystery girl dun sa report ni Tina last week. Yeah. Na si? Yum, yum. Si Yam Yam, ang big winner ng PPB Ocho. Okay, balikan lang natin, Tina. Ano ba kasi yung ating pinag-usapan nun? Kasi meron tayong naspatan during the turnover ng kanyang condominium na mystery girl na Preggy na hindi tayo sure at that time kung sino nga ba siya sa buhay ni Yam Yam. Mm -hmm. Yan. O Arlo, after that, 
Siyempre, nag-monitor ka. Oo, oh, na-intrigue talaga ang mga viewers. Dami ng mga fans ng PBB Otso. Mm. At saka, fans ni Yam Yam. Sabi nila na, ano ba naman yan? Nang-intrigue daw si Miss Tessa. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. Actually, si Tina <laughs> Ho si yun. Wala akong kinalaman. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang po. Siyempre po, alam nyo naman sa aming um, industriya, minsan yan nga po yung whole point of uh, having CSI no, as a program for all of you. Kasi nga sabi namin, uh, minsan, uh, para sa print and even online, pag nagsusulat kami, hindi naman always sanga-sanga. Mahirap mm -hmm. kasi if ipasok mo lahat, yes. ba? Pero that was one thing that I, the Tina so while she was on coverage na sabi nga namin magandang maibalita rin sa inyo since ito freewheeling lahat ng pwede nating ikwento yeah. tinatanong nila ba't hindi mo raw na lang tinanong, tinanong. eh syempre family affair eh, diba yes, yeah. oh. and busy busy din talaga sila oh, oh. At that time. minsan din ho kasi as journalists no we also have to have a feel then of of kung saan yung magse step over the line kami mm -hmm. you know lalo na here, no, when I, syempre, mga bata po ang kasama namin ni Arlo. Di ba, Arlo? Oh. Babata nyo, sali na rin kami. Anyway, um, you know, we, we try to always say to, you know, advice ko rin sa mga reporters, minsan pag sa tingin nyo, medyo intruding na kayo. Medyo wag na natin masyadong ipush. But then again, it's great that we were able to uh, find out the identity. identity. Sino nga ba yun? Oo, oh, oh, meron kasing nag messenger sa akin um, and uh, we will give no our directors and editors si Jesse and Nathan yung screen grab nitong mga to uh, ang sabi doon ay pinsan siya ni Yam Yam oh, at, at ang, siya ang nagdala sa parents ni Yam Yam doon mm -hmm. oo oh, oh, okay ah doon sa condo kasi nga moving in kasi that day si Yam Yam and his family doon no um I think maganda po at gustong gusto ho namin yung interaction na ganyan. Um, pag ho muna kayo may inis sa amin pag sumundot kami kasi hindi rin ho exciting ang buhay nating lahat pag walang sundot. Yes. Pero so, tiyas alam mo ba, si oh. Nika meron din siya na experience kasi um, nag-tweet siya eh. Nag-tweet ka about? Um, nag-tweet po ako about the episode na mag-premiere pero and um, yeah, thankful tayo na madaming fans na nag-like and nag-retweet. Pero meron ding mga troll accounts saying na fake naman yan, puro intriga lang talaga kayo. <laughs> oh, hindi naman po. Pero, <laughs> <laughs> hindi naman ho at kami ho ay uh, ja jaristas. No? So, what we talk about here really, we discuss also uh, in the newspapers. No? And, um, being the oldest newspaper in the Philippines, we also really have to keep that, no, talagang lahat naman ho ng journalists, kailangan totoo lang ang sinusulat. Yung kay Tina naman ho last week, tanong lang kung so, sino. Naman, may na nakita siya. May na, oo. Oh, oh. So, everything was factual. Yes. We just wanted, wanted to know. But, like I said, it's great because uh, we were able to interact sa ating mga viewers. Oh, yes. at, viewers. At iniimbitahan po namin kayo na you know, mag-react din po nang mag-react uh, sa aming mga uh, reports. Sana po magkaroon po tayo ng relation, hashtag relationship. Saka mababanggit okay. natin sila. Oo, oh, 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 bab babatiin po namin kayo. Um, wala lang kasi nga yung phone ko, kaya hindi ko masabi yung name nung nag-messenger sa akin. Although, eh, I think it's not a, an actual name eh, kasi medyo yeah. parang something biz. Mm -hmm. Hindi ko rin ho alam. Pero mukhang totoo naman yung mga pictures din naman na pinadala niya. So, salamat sa'yo sa tulong nyo po sa amin. Ngayon ho, magpapasalamat lang ho kami of course sa lahat ng tumulong sa amin for this episode. Um, Siyempre, si Shelo ang oh, nag makeup, makeup sa amin. Ha? Online editor namin slash makeup artist. Shelo, thank you. And thank you also Siyempre sa Manila Times editorial and our online, um, really, this started off uh, as a show sa Manila Times TV. But of course, dahil kami nga po yung nandito, um, they felt na dapat din naman lumalabas po kami sa online mm -hmm. edition po ng the Manila Times. So we would like to thank always, always, ang family namin dito sa editorial. Salamat po sa inyo. Salamat po kay Chris of Bambi Fuentes for my hair and makeup. <laughs> and the rest is wala ako na lang yun. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Kayo naman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. I love the lipstick. Full bloom siya eh. Oo, oh, oh, diba? Yeah, At sure pati mo ang daddy mo, ni Kapay. I love you. Hi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Pakabait ka na, please. <laughs> Kasi ho siyang una-una nag-comment sa amin. Si Dario. Oh, oh. I love Dika daw. Oo, oh, oh. so syempre, um, next week po, 
babalik ko ang CSI. Um, we really hope na you'll enjoy uh, the succeeding episodes of the show. So, maraming salamat po. Make sure to join us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. for new episodes of the hottest and newest online TV show on the Facebook pages of CSI and the Manila Times TV and on www.themanilatimestv.com. You can also get the latest news of the Manila Times lifestyle and entertainment section at www.manilatimes.net. Click us again and see you next week. Bye! Bye. I, celebrity, style, inspiration.